I mentioned it briefly in one of my Golden Axe videos, that there was a game that was sort of the progenitor to that series. Rise from your grave. Altered Beast, a side-scrolling beat-em-up released to arcades in August of 1988. I think this game is the progenitor to Golden Axe since, well, this was Makoto Uchida's first game as a lead developer at Sega, and because the chicken leg from Golden Axe cameos as an enemy in later levels. Why review this game now instead of after you've finished with all of the Golden Axe games? Well, truth be told, I'm not having fun with Golden Axe Warrior in the slightest, so that one's gonna take a bit. Much like with Golden Axe, Uchida was inspired by particular films he enjoyed before making the game, though this time he was inspired by The Howling, and the music video for Michael Jackson's Thriller. It explains the zombies and the transformations, at least. Story! Altered Beast takes place in ancient Greece. Zeus's daughter, Athena, has been kidnapped by the evil ruler of the underworld, he Neph. This guy right here. I make that joke, but after I did a little research, I found out that there was actually more to the game's story, though you'd have to play the Japan-exclusive Famicom version Juwoki to know about it. In that version, Neff is a demon god who sees the underworld from Hades by force. Whipped like the cur he is, Hades runs to Zeus for help. Zeus puts together an army, including Athena, and intends to take the underworld back from Neff. While storming the underworld, though, Athena is taken captive by Neff, and he threatens to harm her if Zeus doesn't leave. Zeus buggers off and decides alongside a council of the other gods that they need to resurrect the fiercest warrior to ever lived to deal with Neff. Zeus resurrects the Beast Warrior, known as the Centurion in the English versions, and sends him to go deal with Neff. And thus, the game begins. You play as the Centurion after Zeus urges you to... Rise from your grave. Almost immediately after doing so, you're assaulted by the undead. Fortunately, your Centurion was born to kick ass, so you have plenty of ways to defend yourself. You can kick your foes in the shin, crack him in the mouth, punch him in the daddy bags, and kick him in the gooch when they jump over you. I gotta say, these are some of the most bizarre kicks I've ever seen in a game. I guess I couldn't think of a better anti-air style attack, so this is what they went with. You won't be attacked by just zombies, though. Neff fields all manner of undead, monsters, and furry sodomites to stop you. I want to throw these into broad categories, but they all have such bizarre names that I want to include them. Victims of old Japanese naming schemes, I suppose. The Slow Foot and the Headless Horror, though I prefer the more direct translation of Bonehead for that one. Skinny Orcus, a little flying demon. The Grave Master, a more smacked up zombie with hands. <laughs> The Chicken Stinger, our humble little chicken leg before Golden Axe took him over. The Rattletail, dragons that warn you of their approach much like a rattlesnake. But you can stop them if you kick the rattle off, or you can knock their block off when they attack. Round Leeches, these frog creatures that lock on your head and suck your brains out. Cave Needles, who blindly charge you with their dick out. Rock Turtles, probably the most sensibly named enemy in this game. Wait, I take it back. Hammer Demon is definitely the most sensibly named enemy. Or maybe it's the Sawfish? Points for being literal, Japanese translators. Then there's the gory goat, an angry little satyr. Bad boars who can throw hands and come out slinging tanfas for some reason. And by far the most frustrating enemy in the game, the dark unicorn. Hedonistic furries who flamboyantly leap through the air and assault you with their throbbing horns. Old Japanese naming conventions were always worth a giggle due to how strange they came out when translated. That's for sure. But I forgot the most important enemies to note here are the three-headed wolves. I always thought these were pigs when I was a kid, to be honest. The glowing albino version of these wolves will drop a spirit ball on death which powers you up. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games, because this is what it does. It appeals to, like, the male fantasy. Power up. Power up. You get ripped, more ripped, and then your Centurion morphs into his hypercharged-up persona. Someone on the dead team had a fetish of some kind, and I'm not sure I like it here. Each level has a different transformation as well, accompanied by slightly different attack types for each. You also get a fun little transformation scene for each beast too, with a distinct howl to accompany them. <laughs> hurls Haldukens and charges into the fray with a pointed arrow covering his body. The dragon throws a lightning bolt and projects lightning all around himself. The bear belches with foul enough breath to turn his opponents into stone, and he blanket balls all over the place too. Zyger shoots a zigzagging fireball and shoots himself up with his energy, as opposed to straightforward, and the final transformation is just a golden werewolf. You'll need all the power these transformations give you too, since at the end of each of Altered Beast's five stages, there is a beefy, powerful boss awaiting you. That and a lot of the later game minions are actually tough as hell to deal with if you aren't transformed. These bosses on defeat will also suck the power from your bones and return you to being your normal soy boy self, laughing as they do. <laughs> The 
the climax of the game, you'll do battle with Neff. The real Neff, since the other four were just clones of him sent to deal with you. You kill him, rescue Athena, and the game ends, revealing to you that this was all just an elaborate movie shoot. None of this was real. Man, these fucking stuntmen worked me over hard if that was the case. Altered Beast, much like many arcade games at the time, was ported to a variety of systems in the years after its release. Truth be told, I'm far more familiar with the Genesis port of this game, since the first time I ever played Altered Beast was on one of those Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection games, the 360 version to be precise. Truth be told as well, the two do feel actually completely different from one another. Shocking, I know, an arcade game and a console port being so different feeling. The arcade version obviously looks better, has better sound quality, and animations as well. But I can't lie, it feels... slower when it comes to the combat? I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it's because I'm more used to the Genesis version, but my attacks felt way slower and as a result were much harder to use, especially on the more difficult enemies later in the game. The Genesis version attacks felt way snappier and more responsive. The game's super jumps felt way better to use too, not being delayed in the slightest when I was using it to negotiate high jumps. The Genesis version bosses also seemed a little bit more exploitable as well. For instance, the second stage boss, this eyeball watermelon thing, if you just charge up to it the second it opens up and mash your body electricity, you can kill him in about two seconds. I tried this in my arcade one, and while it was kind of effective, I didn't take a single hit in the Genesis version. It also looks like the sheer force generated by your beefed up punches hangs a bit more in the Genesis version, meaning you could take advantage of these damaging active frames. The bit crush sounds of the Genesis version are also, quite frankly, hilarious, and it makes the Genesis version worth a play for them alone. Rise from your grave. Welcome to your doom. To go to a completely different side of the game though, the Japan exclusive version of Altered Beast for the Famicom, while maintaining the same basic gameplay elements, adds three additional transformations and levels to use them in. A lion, a shark, and a phoenix to cap it all off. But at the end of the day, what is there to actually be said about Altered Beast? Most certainly it is a predecessor to Golden Axe, though it feels like the game took more influence from Kung Fu Master. It's blunt, brutally difficult at times, and vaguely erotic in nature. Come on, college boy! Altered Beast is a fun little game, though. It's something you'll want to give a try if you want to see what beat-em-ups were like before major hits like Golden Axe and Final Fight refined the genre into what it looks like today. The series did actually get two sequels, though. Altered Beast, Guardians of the Realm for the Game Boy Advance, and Juoke, Project Altered Beast, a PS2 title that never managed to make it over to the States and has nothing to do with the original games whatsoever. Those won't be in this retrospective, obviously, but I'll probably cover them in the future at some point, especially Juoke, Project Altered Beast. Anywho, I'm Deji's Manticore. This channel is City State Manticore. Leave a like if you enjoyed this little video, and feel free to comment whatever you want. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.